then the Florida State Board of Administration funded A, we have 23,234. And the South State operating account, we have 426,894. These are the balance, that's the balance as of now. Um, in the money market account, we have 1,112,408, and in the reserve, of course, 1,000,000. And the, of the taxes budgeted, the, the tax revenue, we budgeted 621283 We received 623906 The overage is a result of prior years. Uh, we, we have more than we budgeted, like 2600 and that was because of um, prior years. At least the city center beach has not come calling for their Yes, no. I don't know. I honestly. There and they have to send. I mean, it's already been approved. You guys have already approved right. it. So I have to get some kind of invoice from them. They can't just send me an email and say, here, pay this. Right. So I have to have an invoice that shows. And since it's already been approved, I'll write the check. But, you know, we'll have to. Yeah. I do not have any first knowledge of this at all, but I do remember the board in Kurt Stanley and the city funding to assist with this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's a done deal, right? Because they're getting other money to finish the project. I believe our approval was up to three hundred and thirty some thousand dollars. Yeah, that's what I saw. I saw a printed resolution. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next up is approval of minutes uh, for the July nineteenth, twenty twenty two meeting. Clay, you had uh, sent an amended <laughs> minutes. Yes, sir. There was uh, an original set of minutes was circulated to all commissioners. Uh, a, a concern was pointed out that there was a way to more clearly state what occurred in the um, commission meeting, um, and therefore a second set of minutes was circulated. Both of them are factually accurate. I believe the second set um, is more clear as to what occurred. All right. I'll, I'll move to approve the uh, amended minutes. Listen, that because time is All in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah. um, five. Okay. Uh, 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 I don't have anything to report other than the uh, the um, channel marker is. Right, so, that, that takes us to old business, so I'll run channel marker. So, uh, following the meeting last time, I uh, reached out to five separate great contractors in the area. Um, provided and I think you guys all got an email at least. I only received one bid back uh, from the five we contacted. Um, you can see the second page has got the, the prepared proposal. Um, an example of the uh, documentation that was provided follows that if there's one, two, three, four. Mr. Craig, who were the other ones you reached out to the client this one that responded. Who else? Who reached out to besides the world? Uh, just like it says in the, in the uh, document, uh, we reached out to France for Survive, uh, Hilton Construction, Bacon Marine Construction, Lacan Marine, and Hayward Construction. And there was just no contact from them? So we, we received the feedback from Hayward, mm -hmm. uh, and I did hear back from the front, and they, they indicated that uh, they didn't have the equipment available to respond to. That's always going to be a problem just for the public here. We are dealing with companies, none of these uh, companies that are building docks, etc., stay in St. Augustine. They're up and down their condo north in Jacksonville and also along the ground that is still on the Palm Coast. So, Mr. O'Connor was right and honest to say he has left nobody to ever. It's like when the other was going to see it and sell it it took us quite a while to still get our post duck. Found it and I saw him on it, which was right around two grand. We're still being doubted that you know, right around five grand post. That's double the cost. So, Mr. Connie, nobody will ever, we discussed this before, be able to 
run right over there and do it. Even with the open assault run, he had to wait to finish it. You're right, the reposition of equipment to do it, which is why I have many times said the court should own the equipment to handle their own business and leave it out to a private company. So we're in the same position now where we're looking at paying close to five grand for a stick. Uh, it, my uh, recollection was that both Sandy and Chris were going to solicit. Chris was on my list. list. Yeah, that's the same thing I got from Mr. Conti, but again, it's always about. And even when Yeldon was doing it for us consistently, we waited for a year to get the one that protects the, uh, the Morin Field south of the bridge because they had to wait for the equipment. So we are always, no matter who says that, if Mr. or somebody has an equipment right here and we'll run over, it'll just be for this time. But it's still pretty, it's a, it's a doubt. There's no doubt about it. The only way out of this uh, is to have our own equipment. And those, those wooden sticks will continue because you can push them right over. Do you know if that was at least a pounded in uh, stick or was it going to be the specifications that they were provided, they're allowed to check the first couple of feet just to get it started and they have to drive it to the and how would we ever know that they actually did that job and pounded it in? Because most of their equipment doesn't come with a pounder. It's a, you know what I'm saying? Well, they, they all received this. If you want us to observe during their installation, we can do that. Um, well, they just thought, I'm just saying, everything we've gotten so far, you can push over with my name. It's all been jettisoned in, and we paid up to $9,500. You see where I'm at in the public. I'm simply trying to protect our tax dollars. I don't, why can't we go with Mr. Lacande? Did he give you a price at all? No. He just said he wasn't able to do it. Right. Okay. Uh, Chris, did you come back and say that? No, he uh, asked me to comment to the other three contractors that I was with. But every time I talk to the three contractors, I get you some kind of collusion. Right. Well, sometimes that happens. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. It happens. That sure does happen. It's it easy to prove sure. that, too. We'll talk about it later. I know. Um, so it sounds like we are, we have exactly one bid. This work needs to get done. Um, so I move that we uh, we go ahead with the bid that, that Taylor received. Uh, around $9,500, I want to say, or so $9,400. Yeah, no, 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 Is that the same way? Yeah. Are they the fence building company in town? They were located in uh, Jackson, 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 Jackson. Oh, you're thinking of Hardwick? Oh, Hardwick. Yeah. 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 I was going to say I have a good reputation, but it's Hardwick. I'm thinking about Yeah. So that's a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? I'll second. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought you were a second. Sorry, Chris. Uh, so all in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Um, next up is new business letter support. I know it's um, as we left it off in the last meeting, I was going to draft a letter, circulate as commissioners. Um, you have an opportunity to debate or two beforehand to suggest any changes. I didn't at least did anybody write in with any proposed modifications and get in touch with you. So this, this is going to be an up and down vote. Carl, I believe you wanted to uh, speak on this first up. Yeah, I just wanted to um, add something to this discussion that might, might be helpful. Um, the issue of uh, FWC issuing no wait zones uh, is, is uh, controversial throughout the state. Um, the FWC is very careful about uh, action going forward with issuing a no wait zone. Primarily, what the reason for that is what they receive a lot of requests uh, for no wait zones from uh, waterfront property owners, especially along the coastal waterway. And um, it's primarily focused that the property owner simply doesn't want anybody getting flown out there and not fast. <laughs> and uh, the, the reality of it is that the intercoastal waterway is the Marine Line 95. So if everyone got a no wait zone, or if you have no wait zone, you would be able to run the waterway, it would be very uh, major problem. So, um, so the FWC is very careful about that and, and, and somewhat suspicious when they receive an application. 
So when this issue came up, um, city staff contacted me to see if I would write a support letter. And quite frankly, I wouldn't touch it with a thousand foot pole. Um, but I did recommend uh, to, to the city attorney that when they uh, made their application to FWC, that they strongly point out that this request is not driven by uh, border front property owners. That it really, you know, border front property owners are nowhere really near this particular location. And, and that is not the issue that's driving the request. So anyway, I just wanted to pass that on. I don't know, uh, the city attorney, I think you might have even put it in a letter to FWC or the application. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to include that in your letter of recommendation that it's not related to a request for from property owners. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to, to explain uh, you know, what I know about the issue and the fact that it's an issue that, that I chose to not. For one thing, I had to go to my board and uh, say, hey guys, can you authorize me to write this letter and I can that my board not touch it. So, uh, but I just wanted to ask those comments. Yes, sir. Sure. Well, the, the terms you said is the I-95 there. 3995. Because that's in the map of the chain, that's correct. I mean, possibly the creek is. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the other issue. Yeah. And the, it, it's not right where you have, you know, an official uh, permitted map of the chain. Right. That would be the other issue to point out to that. Good catch. The Hospital Creek situation has nothing to do with what's going on in the Intercoastal Waterway. People will not want to see that place. It's dangerous. Yeah. We have a corner, and I have nearly seen Conapers run completely over, even though you can stop fast in a boat, because they're looking at me on the top. Yeah. See what, what I'm doing out there, see? Dead, just a dead.
important contribution to kind of our vote grant purchase. I see Commissioner Dean is here, so I don't have to fill the
be the engineers and planners on board to start doing some conceptual work. Um, you know, I want to be very careful with we're going to explore all options to develop cost effectively a regional road rating park that gives us good traffic flow. Have you considered a This is something we obviously are going to move fast on the right? This is the tile up. The property we got it. Oh, wait, it's under contract. We have an executed purchase and sale agreement. Um, provided everything goes smoothly, so we're at survey phase one and title work, we hope to close by December. Um, it would be that quick. Um, the board has voted to fund it, but part of why I'm here is to see. I know the last time I was here, you guys talked about funding, um, so I'm here to um, listen for that, and then if Andrea would like to. Ms. Neal, that's about 31 acres total, and yes, I was talking to um, Matthew, Nathan, uh, 16, and um, he was saying maybe, I was just saying, uh, Mr. Wong, there may be five or six acres of parking, trailer parking. One quick side note on that is to please remind everybody that down at the Baker Banks RV Park, they literally have all kinds of parking for RVs and trees so that you don't have to walk a lot. They don't have to clear it. You can still park amongst the trees just as a reminder. They do it down. Not easy, but they can do it if it's pulled through. That's sure. going to be a trouble. And on the five to six acres, I'm just giving that comparison to right. one of them. So we're not any, we're near the point right. either of knowing right. how much sure. acreage sure. is going to be set aside for either of these could be set aside. Right, so a few acres for parking based on that 17, then you put it at something around half a million dollars an acre or something like that is what you're paying. Say it's on five acres for parking. Now that's before you build the boat ramp and all that stuff. So the port could technically um, finance an awful lot of that project. Almost like maybe a little bit. I just want this data. I don't know how this is going to go. I am more than happy in my vote uh, to issue a bond to take out a loan. This is a once in a lifetime legacy project. I think for everybody serving in politics now that we can get hold of this. And uh, so just you know, that's where I stand. I'm going to let you come in just a few months. But um, I'm looking at we could easily find that. And I'd also love to see the report. And I know the county has started now a great next feature right for grants. FWC had a grant. Um, the Windward Group got it for Comanche. A private group got it for free grant to build a uh, transient dock, as you can see. We just closed in July 1st. And I've just been fussing about it forever and we can't get to right. And so um, hopefully we'll write for some grants for these. But my opinion is do whatever the court can. Uh, even if it's a bond or take another loan. Good afternoon. Uh, Henry Dean, uh, uh, District 5 County Commissioner, and I look down the street away, so quick drive. The first thing I'm going to do is thank all of you for the hard work. Uh, I have a background in waterways, natural resources, water management, so I have a unique perspective, I think, about what good job you do because it's so important to protect our waterways, our ports, our beaches. I mean, we live in paradise. We need to keep that as much as we can. Which brings me to the subject at hand. And uh, it sounds like I'm preaching to the state when I talk to Commissioner Flowers, so I'm going to turn my attention out. When I, when this was brought to me, when Gail briefed me on this a while back, I I just uh, was overwhelmed at the opportunity for those who know the history of St. Augustine and St. John's County versus Fresno that, you know, 50 years ago we had 35,000 people in this county. Close, I think we discussed it. There must have been the public because it's 35. 35. 30 maybe. One minute. So since then, I mean, not only have we had an explosion of growth, but yeah. just look at the roughly five mile radius around the Jennifer Jennifer track. I mean, it's just a, a commercial, you know, explosion in the, in the last year. So when this idea, when Gail brought me this idea, uh, I just I was kind of overwhelmed because it's an oasis in the middle of chaos. And this is perfect location. 
expectation for a urban park equal only to the need for the additional boat ramps and for deep water access. Uh, I can assure you that my fellow commissioners, Paul Walter, expressed a keen support and excitement because he has had a history, as you know, Chris, of voting and being a licensed captain and has a lot of friends in that uh, group. And so he's very excited. I am too, but to, to me, in my background, when I look and see this is I picture a family, a family of four going out late afternoon, sitting under the oaks, having a picnic, looking out over the Intercoastal, the, the, uh, the San Sebastian River, which flows into the Intercoastal. And so it's really two for one. But of course, uh, y'all's primary interest is uh, uh, waterways and boats and, and access. And so with that said, if you look at, I think that the, the other closest deep water access may be Belfer Ramp on the island, and the next one, of course, is Guano to the north. This fills that gap, and uh, we're so far behind in the number of uh, ramps and, and uh, docks that we need for the public, not only for our residents, but our visitors who come to uh, outlying counties and, uh, you know, pay, you know, the uh, red tax our revenues that all the things we are doing in that field of what we need for uh, providing infrastructure for tourists and be for nourishment uh, to me too. So I'll shut up, but I hope that uh, the Fort Marble Beach Authority can come up uh, with a significant contribution match to, the, to be a partner in this, because it is, Sammy said it best, it's a legacy. It's a legacy.
different points of mission to spend that money, which we can't have been having for a while. So I expect that's what y'all are going to ask for today, right? Well, let me speak to that if I may. Sure, I'll, I'll say this. It's, it's only one commissioner because we haven't made, we haven't taken a position to the full board. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this: that first one, I would be extremely, extremely grateful to the one and a half million participation. Uh, anything above that would be more wonderful. But I'm also, as commissioner, well, I said, because I understand budget constraints, other projects, I get that. And but uh, an offer of one and a half million or partnership of one and a half million would be wonderful, but if, if there is any other way to increase mm -hmm. that and still deal with your own budget, uh, that would be uh, wonderful on our part. I mean, we also, uh, in recognizing that we've had a very, very large deficit of both grants and both deep water access, we actually created a sinking fund and put plenty of money away in that fund, basically called water access. We're sort of in that way uh, on the same path you have been on. Uh, right now, uh, we would, uh, without your participation uh, with the other participating agencies, we would be having to uh, use $8 million out of our general fund, which is quite a bit, which sort of pays our annual operation costs for the county, employees, services, etc. cetera. Uh, so anything that uh, we can do uh, together I know my fellow commissioners would be very, very pleased if we could lower that $8 million uh, down down to uh, a little less. So uh, I understand budget constraints. So I spent 30 years in government before I was commissioner. Well, since we're just three of us here today, too, and you know, two other people love to, you know, uh, uh, the one foot five, we could always say, since that's already been discussed and we've already kind of discussed that, say, okay, we, we could say we've got one foot five, then we could go like that and also give us other grants and or waiting for the rest of the commission to come back because I was thinking more like three million. Um, well, and the reason I said I just want to, you know, first of all, we it's not a lot of money for these things. And you're talking about several acres of the parking and the boat grant and hopefully kayak access. So there's a lot going on down by the border that's going to be expensive. So uh, would it be possible for us to like maybe say go ahead and put the one and a half million towards it with an effort to come up with some more? That certainly would be wonderful from my standpoint uh, because that's certainly I'm sorry Tom and Jane had obvious conflicts, but I, they both I think I, I know them both pretty well. They kind of support uh, floating recreational. So why do you have to get more out of it? Yeah. Well, we've got time. Absolutely. I, I think the thing to do is exactly that. You know, we have we have that one and a half million in reserve. Every member of this commission voted in favor of putting it in reserve for this specific purpose. So there's no impropriety in us uh, I think voting on that today. I will say, you know, if we put more money in, we're that, this is gonna put us down to a little over a million in the bank, maybe about a million five. We are still heading I mean, we're in the middle of hurricane season right now, so I don't know if it makes a lot of sense for us to to drain the tanks completely before we're going to know whether or not we're going to have to try to pay the uh, inlet out. But um, I would absolutely be in favor of, of, of voting uh, to, to uh, allow that one and a half million uh, reserve funds today. And, and in fact, I'll, I'll make that motion right now. Well, I'd like to think that if it, because there's still so much planning and everything, that if you got further along and got more definitive about the, the boat ramp itself and the access to the water, um, we, I think the board would like to have some input in that. Yeah. Because we don't yeah. have most of our one point five would like to launching boats in the water and, and in the infrastructure for that. But we would like to require some floating docks, I'm not assuming that. Oh, yeah, sure. Or well, some transit yeah. yeah. discussions. Yeah, so we have like to tie off. So we have had some discussions at the staff level on the um, development and construction cost and when we go out for grants, et cetera. And um, with the commissioner here too, between the two of us, the goal is to get the property acquired. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that's the first goal. Yeah. Um, I think the impact to our constituents would be if you could contribute the 1.5 towards acquisition cost. And then when we start doing our conceptual planning, part of that is going to be public outreach. And I have mentioned, you know, my husband is on these um, social media pages where everyone complains about everything about our programs, et cetera. 
And I said, well, you know, what I find interesting is no one ever shows up to the Fort Lauderdale meetings, you know. So we are going to do public outreach, and we want to include you all as a part of that and to figure out how to advertise it and meet all the Sunshine Law requirements for such. But absolutely conceptual, there's going to be a lot of input. Um, and I don't know if Henry is okay waiting for the 1.5 construction cost and going out of the general fund reserves for the full eight. Well, let me say, my, certainly my preference, Chris, would be to go ahead and make the commitment to close and using that 1.5, because it's really sort of a fungible good. I mean, whether you designate, we're going to be spending the money on all the program improvements in the park, because that's clearly why I'm buying it. And so it's really, I would like to bring as much money to the table when we close, as opposed to bringing counting money and then waiting two years to get it done. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I'm just like, maybe at some point, if we would just have a workshop among us and, and, and research stuff on programs, this is one big, really nice opportunity. I agree, and I certainly commit I, my commitment to you for the workshop and your full participation because that's what we all do is to take care of the waterways. Yeah. So, if I see it as a partnership, I would ask you uh, if we could uh, proceed with the, uh, uh, first, the first one and a half million because, again, that, that will go to the purchase of the property and then we'll be putting in the rest of the money from other sources, including our water access fund uh, and other grants, I hope, frankly, to do the actual construction. Uh, I've heard that grant from DMR at the city left that I used to work on 40 years ago. That's right, I'm proud of my friend. Just to be clear, there is a core present case in the budget where it's highly appropriate to go to 1.5 today. Perhaps a consideration would be whether there be additional funds down the road to be more details, such as signs and placards saying this project brought to you in part by the Port District, sure. to be discussed along with some of those other details. Did I recall, I recall early on, we were talking about you know, the inland was our biggest issue, a bit of a problem, and we kind of banged it around what, what money that reserve is, and, and I think you made the message. A million dollars that would cover anything in the end. Uh, yeah, for one part of our navigation district. Um, yeah, when I served on this board, we basically uh, used that number as a reserve to uh, be able to open in an emergency. And it's kind of based on uh, what the core charges for their hopper dredges, which I think is up about $30,000 a day. And Everybody is hoping desperately to build lots of energy. 
years for non-coronavirus models, and hopefully it won't be years and years once we have this that we can get on. But even the kayaking is so easy, we could just even open the back of it. Well, you know? I've been driving across the Freewell Bridge for 38 years now, looking down at that property and thinking, man, that would be such a great area to recreate, including kayaks and canoes. Kind of, we could probably find a path in that hole. The largest waterfront, the long, large stretch of waterfront, is not where the boat ramp is, it's along that from three well up to where the boat ramp is. Right. Seven eighths of the, and I thought, man, well, it would be nice to have a kayak launch in those wetlands, not destroying the wetlands, but kind of have a little bit of, of a. Just a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Which we mitigate for it. That's so nice about quite, you know, non road grass. It doesn't take much to get them in there. Yeah, well, I love it. I love it. And then we're on the northwest corner of the bridge on the southeast is Fish Island. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, thank you. Yeah. Has the county still thinking they like Fish Island? I'd love the court to get a hold of Fish Island and put a public too. Wouldn't that be something? Possibly. We need community space so badly. And of course, I've heard recently they've sought a conservation overlay on that uh, piece of property. So it really can only be. Uh, what it is now, pretty much. It's an interesting thing for the new information coming up. Well, thank you all so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to New Business the Engineering Contract. Yeah, so uh, the contract has expired. As it expires on the 25th. Sorry, it expires later this month. But we, uh, the contract has negotiated had a extension clause, a two-year extension clause. Um, uh, so we need to either go one to one, we need to extend it, or we need to send out bids for a new engineer, which we just did two years ago. Um, I personally would move that we just extend it. That's what we negotiated for. I agree. Jim, yeah, it would be possible to do that with the, because we just did some tax raising and stuff with the form of only two. Form of three instead of five, is it would be possible for a contract to be extended for a couple more years if we could get the uh, entire form? I should have asked that. Um, so, yeah, if we have, it, it can just go once a month, right? It's right. So, let's, uh, that's, I, I'm fine with that. We can, we can extend it once a month, uh, at least until the next meeting, uh, and hopefully we'll have uh, more, more commissioners here and we can vote on it. Because that, ex that extension term is, that, that does not expire. We can extend it for two years. Uh, not being a lawyer. Right, that was, that was my understanding for me as well. Which will be answerable within 30 days, as long as that's on the new board might do something different. Right, um, so, sure. Uh, perhaps, just thinking about that, perhaps you guys could get together and talk You do have a quorum. It's just a note for the record. We have a quorum of three. There are five people on this commission. Which is, again, 
a okay, so uh, this is wait. A form of three. It's not a form of what two what is not a form of what am I putting on under old business? Uh, to uh, confirm, I guess, uh, Taylor engineering uh, contract extension. Okay. Uh, finally, new business uh, D discussion regarding protocol for disposing of plumbing docks. Yes, uh, several constituents would like to know why um, law enforcement is not called when someone dumps their dock in our river. It's dumping, it's illegal, it's extremely dangerous. And last time, this is, we've had, I believe, three in the four years I've served. And the last time they called Mr. White from the villages, was it the village of Toronto that had the dump villages? And said, and uh, he came and he got the money for it. Nobody did an investigation. These docks, when people replace their cold floating docks, it's very expensive. It's thousands of dollars to dispose of the old ones. So what do you think they do? They cut it free and off it goes. It's extremely dangerous and deadly. It never goes far because it's so dangerous. Somebody grabs hold of it. If we don't call law enforcement, instead of just calling a commissioner and all of a sudden we're paying this, they don't even get a chance to go out there and say, where did this dock come from? It might be a brand new floating dock sitting right there next to it. But nobody even engaged that. So I'd like to look at maybe again with the rest of the board and have some kind of protocol. Don't not get cut loose. You don't get to call a commissioner on the board and then that's approved and law enforcement never gets involved with it. When a floating dock breaks loose or you've caught one at your dock, please call law enforcement so they can at least go look, maybe ask a few questions. Sometimes it's not hard to prove at all. But this is the third time in four years. We not only get people little dead boats that the con our constituents hate to have to pay for, now we're getting people's floating docks without it ever being reported to law enforcement. So if we could get a protocol that we don't ever participate in removing a floating dock until it's been investigated, I think it'd be helpful. We have law enforcement here. Uh, do you have anything, uh, Frank, that you'd like to, uh, to add to that? Um, well, so the we, Wait, we, state, uh, state your name. Oh, Aaron Braddock, Thank you. The, what we have a lot of times is people do call about the navigational hazard uh, dock floating in the area, or we get, uh, we locate the dock ourselves uh, by just being out there. Um, the problem we run into a lot of times is proving that someone that did this. Uh, if it breaks loose um, due to natural factors, um, we typically don't, well, we're not going to go through with an illegal dumping or anything of that nature. Um, we're going to try to you know, secure the, the dock in some fashion and see if we can get it out of the water. The, now, if someone does cut it loose, yes, we could um, go with uh, illegal dumping and anything over by our town would be a felony, um, which most of those docks are going to be well. Well, that would be felony dumping if they do that. Yeah. It's going to. The, the burden of proof is going to be the, the problem, and I don't want to uh, tell you that, yes, every time a dock is cut loose, we're going to be able to determine, yes, this person cut that loose intentionally to dump it. Um, that's, that can become uh, a problem. That's very hard to do unless somebody saw it. Mm -hmm. um, or Sometimes they see it. Something. Somebody might have been sitting in the car, but so my point is not that you can prove it. It's the protocol, calling up an individual commissioner, and then all of a sudden CETO shows up and takes it off, and nobody has ever even inquired, has looked at it, believe me, these docks. It takes a lot. We lost one fish out on recently. It was ready to go, but we lost it because a 60 foot sport fisher came up in there with no duck in the air. And, and, we it, that. You could, and we got it back from this. So that one dock didn't, and believe me, that wasn't easy. That one dock didn't get. Thing on the taxpayers. Well, and but that dock was so ready to, what I'm trying to tell you, sir, is they don't let loose by themselves. That one, we, you know, and we, nobody has a floating dock without knowing it's about to go. So yeah. if they let it go, they still be responsible for a lot of maintenance. That would be something to talk to a state attorney right. about. When, like, right. state I'm not about. asking you to be able to prove it. I'm asking for protocol from the board. We don't go out and approve expenditures for something that. Uh, that would be felony dumping without a police report. It needs to be called. Well, I, I didn't have a comment. I'm not asking you. I'm asking the court if we could establish a protocol that when we come in here, it would just like a derelict boat. This thing comes in, got the derelict boat, and 
water that went through a one point plant. It's the same thing. If you can do a thousand dumping, then you can do it. If you can't, well, we've got to do something. And if, and the cortical man was awful. If we're doing a fight about something and there's suspicion that it was, that a crime was committed, we definitely yeah. it. So if, if there's suspicion that this was uh, intentionally cut loose or if there was something else that uh, under you know, human power it, it came loose or even uh, negligence to, to maintain the dog and, and, and so forth, that could be looked at from the state attorney's office. We have, from the sheriff's office standpoint, that if someone claims that a crime possibly was committed, then we have absolutely no problems uh, going and investigating that to establish if we can establish probable cause to believe that it was uh, or if but we can definitely do uh, a dumping investigation anytime uh, someone asks us to. So if that is the case, but as far as the protocol and um, how to that back. Right, so if the court, if we could go and establish some kind of a protocol so it wasn't coming straight to the court, because it looks like papers when that happens, you see? Because it could be that that contract being replaced in England, and there's a new dog sitting right there just around the corner, might be a massive contractor. But I've had contractors advise homeowners on the street where I live to go ahead and cut it through to the court and come get it paid. Because it's very expensive. It's more expensive for the homeowner to pay for it than it is for us. I don't know why. But nonetheless, I really like to see that stop. What do y'all think about that protocol? Mr. Mayor, Governor, yes, Governor Mayor, thank you. Um, I would just like to remind the entire board that the primary concern of the Fourth District is safety and welfare on the waterways. From what I have seen, these emergency approvals have come up to avoid the water hazard and the potential that it looked for a person who is damaged or injured. To the extent the board adopts a policy that puts in things that have to be done or points that have to be made before you address the emergency hazard on the water, you could be um, working against yourselves for the primary purpose of the district. Just a thought to keep in mind. Sir, FWC and the sheriff and uh, the city all have votes to address the emergency hazard on the board. That's why we should call them first. Nobody in this commission is prepared to address an emergency hazard. So the number one, because it could be an emergency, is call law enforcement. For me, for my vote to, get, to give money to these, I need to know that it was checked out. So would y'all like to discuss that or wait for the board to reconvene and maybe discuss it then? But Did this is great. Did you have a motion? What's your motion? Oh, my motion would be that uh, in order for us to consider paying for building dock removal, that it must be reported to law enforcement. We need to receive that from law enforcement, a complaint from law enforcement. And by the way, sir, Mr. Me, law enforcement, anytime there's a hazard, they grab, like the one we just lost at Fish Island, they grab hold of that dock. It's not, that nobody lets it sit and float. Even a homeowner at the city arena, you secure it somewhere. It doesn't stay floating. Either F that somebody will be out there to get that. So, of course, Tommy will be on it first. But that would be my motion that we, we only consider uh, building dock removals after the uh, law enforcement has taken it forward. Is there a second? Yeah, the motion is actually like the second. Uh, public comment. Chairman, uh, I guess uh, this time is based uh, for me as your... Carl, state district. your name, please. Yeah, Sorry. Carl Blows, part of the Navigation District. Um, first off, I, I, uh, I am extremely excited about this county's effort to buy about 31 acres to form a public program. Um, it takes a lot to get me excited. Uh, but uh, I thought I'd, I'd come today that I'm so the idea, apparently, that's not a problem. And you guys are on board, and I'm really happy to hear that. I think it's a good decision on the part of the board district. Um, as far as fines involved in it, I've met the county staff. We're going to 
here and our kind of tax area. I'll just hand this out real quick. Periodic 
something that needs to be dredged, and this board has dredged it in the past. Um, one of the challenges is once you dredge it, is to offload the dredge material. Unfortunately, the city had a very narrow pathway uh, that we had planned in the future to try to utilize the, to uh, unload spoil material, dredge material, but the honest way, it, 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 it didn't work, work very well. So one thing that uh, to keep in mind going forward, and this, this is a little premature, but uh, when, when the design of the boat ramp is done, uh, keep in mind it would be uh, important to have an area where you can pull a barge up there and unload uh, dredge material. Uh, that is what was done in the lot. Now, why do you think we're going to unload dredge material at that location? Because it's the only Where they take the dredge material last? Well, in that, you'll have to barge it to the lot. Okay, but, have to barge okay. it. but if we were going to dredge it down here and ask you so what we would dredge. Sebastian was dredge, Hospital Creek. Marsh Creek and the Belton Cove all at one time, so we could put it all in a tunnel, and that would be the only sin because it's all dirty soil. So see? Well, the other issue too is also not only dredge material, but uh, you know, dock repair, construction material, that sort of thing. And, and, and one thing the county did years ago, which we cite in, in, in other places, is when Murano was built, it was it, it has a, a, a stretch of bulkhead there designed to take. Which is used on a regular basis. So, the uh, county did a great job when they designed Milano, and I'm just saying that when we get into design here, that would be very important too, so that, that primarily the so fans of the National River can be made. Well, I mean, that's all the people I mentioned earlier. We need to do a workshop and figure out yeah. the best use of that property. Makes sense. Yeah. But anyway, I just want to say, like I said, I'm super excited. With, I mean, September 15th, we have a regular meeting at 3 o'clock on the 15th, and then we have a, and, and then we have a, the, the first, first public hearing at 5.05.